how many photos do you take a day? That's not a rhetorical question. I really want you to think about it. How many photos do you take every single day? Most people are usually taking pictures with their smartphone. And some would argue to say that they're taking those pictures without really thinking about composition, subject matter, lighting, or any of the other traditional photography principles. That's the average person. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that concept. I love taking pictures of the sunset with my phone. It's literally something that brings me joy. But I'm also not necessarily the average person. I, like many other people, consider myself a photographer. I've spent countless thousands of dollars on gear, countless thousands of hours taking pictures, and even more hours and hours editing. I'm someone who enjoys the practice and the art of photography. It's been said that anyone can take a picture, but making a photograph is a process. It's an experience. And truthfully, it's a high that I really don't want to come down from. Recently, I asked my audiences here on YouTube and on Instagram what type of content they wanted to see from me. And really the only response that I got was photography. This slightly surprised me because I've been making a lot of video focused and video based content, but I got my start in this realm with photography. So it really only makes sense. Photography is really what made me fall in love with my camera. It made me fall in love with the art and the practice of documenting my life and experiences. And so in today's video, I'm going to be giving just a few tips on documenting your life through photography. For simplicity's sake, I'll be talking from the perspective of bringing a proper camera and not just taking pictures with your phone. Tip number one is to keep it on you. When I was in college, I had a saying, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people developed this saying, and it's phone, wallet, keys. But now I'm at the point where it's phone, wallet, keys, camera. It's a thousand times easier to take a picture or document your life when you have your camera on you. Um, that's just the truth. And a point about bringing a camera instead of using a phone is actually that phones are meant to be a distraction. I've said this before, phones are meant to be a distraction. There's pop-ups, there's dings, there's all kinds of notifications. But with a camera, it's literally the only purpose is to pull it out and document. And so I find myself being more present in these moments than if I were to just try to use my phone. Tip number two is to make it simple. I've spoken to several people about why they don't bring their cameras with them, and most of them say that they're paralyzed by choice. Choice of which body to bring, choice of which lens to pack, choice of which accessories to bring. I was also once in this scenario. After acquiring gear and getting familiar with cameras, it's easy to be paralyzed by, I should bring everything, but then you don't want to bring everything, or what happened? I need a specific tool and I just don't have it. The reality is you just have to live with it. The way that I get over this now is that I make things incredibly simple. I decide on one body, one lens, and that's it. Sometimes I go as far as to even only shoot in black and white that day. That way I am really not having to look at or pay attention to extra details and I can really just be in the moment. That's not to say that I don't have days where I pack a specific body and lens and then I get wherever I'm going and I wish that I had a different piece of equipment. We've gone to the mountains and I've wished that I'd brought a longer lens or a wider lens and I just didn't pack it that day. The reality is that even though I know that I probably could have captured better images, I'm still extremely happy that I was able to capture any image at all, that I had my camera with me and that I was able to document that my life. As humans, we get caught up in this idea of FOMO and we allow it to paralyze us from making any decision at all. And so one of the best ways that I've found to combat that is to just make things as simple as possible when you get started. Just make a choice, live with that choice, and continue to make different choices each time until you figure out something that works really well for you. The third and final tip that I have for today is to always provide context. So 
This tip is more focused on after you've already taken the photos and you're organizing them and putting them together. Some people don't understand how they do this, but they do not name and date their files, but it's become an essential part of my process to at least document the location, the date, and sometimes I even document the activity so that when it's time to look back on these memories and these moments, I can very quickly and very easily remember and find out what exactly it was I was doing at that time in those photos. This is something that I really consider essential when it comes to documenting your life through photos. Our memories get fuzzy and time moves so quickly. And truthfully, if you're out in nature or even if you're out in the city, locations look the same. And so making sure that you take those notes and put those notes with those photos definitely helps in the actual documentation part of this process. I hope that those tips were helpful for you. I hope that you got value out of that. I really do plan on making more photography focused videos on this channel and more photography focused content, especially around documenting your life using photography. So if that interests you, I would really greatly appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up or go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Until next time, remember to do the work, believe in yourself and keep creating. Peace.